Okay, we're gonna watch the Helomatic get going right here. Tyler! <whistles> stop over there! Okay, so Helomatic cold bore shot right here. Starting off from nothing. You got the whole thing in there? You can hear me? All right, so go ahead. The loosest part of this arena is right over in that corner. It's really deep. Here's Tyler. What gear are you in? He's in third gear right there. Um, see, it gets over there in that loose sand, but it's pulling around here. Watch this action. It's got a lot of hip motion. Yeah, and uh, another thing about it is we haven't dra drugged this arena yet either, so he's right in the middle of all these ruts that have been there before. See, it's not bouncing very much. The skis kind of cut through those cut through those ruts a little bit. Looks like it's working pretty good. I'm going to ease on out here and see what it feels like. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go. What pulley is it on? Middle. Middle? Okay. So to start off, I want to say this. I didn't, ch I didn't change the pulleys on either one of those. I got them exactly like they were from the guys that, that were roping them. I never changed anything on any. This is on the middle pulley of the Helomatic, which is, I mean, I'd have to get my tape measure out and measure them, but it's about the same. This, the middle pulley is your average pulley on a Helomatic. So I, I would assume that all of these are set about the same. Rope this at a walk to start off with, okay? Just a walk right here. You know, still hopping pretty slow. They're all all slow to walk right here. So, terrible loop on my end. Walk right here. Okay, go ahead and put me in a trot. Nice little trot. Okay. Go ahead and get me in a lope. Go ahead and kick it up to a lope here. Okay. Holy, 
hole or a rock or something. Okay, don't drive over it anymore. So don't drive over it anymore. Give me one more lope. Kind of Uh, one thing that you can see is very, it's very lightweight, and uh, now we're going to do the out of time heel shot. And so right now the time machine is definitely winning the impossible out of time heel shot. And uh, so here's the out of time heel shot with a helomatic. As we can see, it's pretty easy to rope this thing out of time. Feet are forward. There's nothing really to block us. As long as I'm throwing a nice loop in there, I was kind of trying two different deals, kind of a trap. So there's nothing really to block it from roping it out of time. Try some heading now. Can you hand me that head rope, please? All right, we're just going to try it here. What? Talk, 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 talk. I haven't been talking at all. Okay. So, right here, just gonna just do a nice little throw right here. Got a little more tension on it, see, I can feel that pull right there. I can feel that pull right there on this dummy, and I think that's a good thing. Gonna make some live runs heading now with it, and uh, I tell you, I'm, I'm everything that I'm trying to do on my end is the same too. I'm trying to use the same size loop, just things that I'm thinking about to make it consistent. And just the way the way that the dummy is, the head is on this. 
more like a live steer and the bottom line is you've got more surface area like a steer's head and so when i pull my slack from roping the dummy so much you know we all kind of know where we're at to get a tight head loop i can get my head loop tight on this where it's not tight on the other ones just because i got to shorten things up a little bit more because there's not as much it's it's only going around a small area on those other ones instead of kind of a lifelike head so that's that's one difference you'll notice and we'll i'll put some slow mo on there you'll see the head loops are just a little bit snappier on this dummy and it's just because of the way the head ties into the neck and the body right there we're going to do some live runs right now let's do some live runs this thing just feels a lot lot different to me <sighs> granted I have roped this machine more than anything else but it feels more like live steers and that's what it's all about is just feeling like live cattle try to beat me Just, just try to go as fast as you can. So after, after heading this thing a few times, I can tell you this right now, like, I feel like I can be way snappier on the head loop. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to do everything the same. I'm trying to do the same loop, try to come with it, swing hard. And this, I feel like it just, my rope, the loop, the head takes up a little bit more of your loop. So it lets you get your slack out kind of more realistic. So, and then, you know, you know, one of the misconceptions heading is that you want to rope and come back and really get your rope tight and pull those steers across there. But one thing that you want to do on the heading dummy is keep your horses free and really running up. So, I mean, if you're a guy that has a gray head horse that kind of wants to suck back a little bit every once in a while, I would probably go ahead and run up and stick and just, it's okay to stay right there with it. I like heading this dummy way better than the other two. It has way more surface area for my rope to go around. When I pull my slack, it goes on tighter. I would love to put the felt of hot heels on this and it would be, that would be awesome. And especially up around under the horns, not necessarily just on the neck, but up around under the horns on the front of the head. It tilts its head to the left and the horns release. And, and this is, it's got a little bit more tug to it. And it's not tug that your rope won't come off. It's tugged just like I can feel it to the saddle horn. I think that's important because I want to know when I'm getting a little bit of tug, when to ride my horses forward. So I do like that on the heading side a lot. Um, on the heeling side of this thing, it takes a long time to get my rope off sometimes. And every once in a while, it'll get hung up on the back bar. And uh, you got to ride it and kind of fish it off there. If I had to say that's the worst thing about heeling it, it just takes a little bit longer to shake your rope off. Now, with saying that, the reason it takes a little bit longer to take your rope off is because the feet on this thing are wide. And it's a narrow hawk, and then the feet kick out so that you've got to throw a big loop down on there. So what you're losing in your rope not coming 
right off, you're gaining in having a wider set of legs to rope, which I want a wide target. It's just like roping a set of horns. It kind of makes you do it all right every time. So I would call that kind of a wash. Um, and this is the part that, uh, this is the part that may sound biased, and I, all I can do is be honest to everybody out there. This machine is easier for me to rope, and yeah, I have roped it a million times, but it feels like a steer to me. It feels exactly like roping a steer. I don't look at the feet when I heal. I look at the hips. Some people look at the feet. Some people look at the hips. I kind of look like right here at this whole deal. I don't get in time with the feet coming back or going forward. I get in time with the hip coming up and down, and the reason is probably from roping with Alan Bach. And, and the bottom line is this. When the feet are up in the, or when the hip is up in the air, the feet are off the ground. This thing feels realistic to me. Um, my deliveries are a lot prettier on this machine. I feel like I'm in time. My horse feels in time. And it's just because of the stride of the hop. So um, that can be, you can take that for what it is. That is my opinion. But if you watch these runs side by side, watch my delivery on the time machine, watch my delivery on the hot heels. And I'm trying to catch them as good as I can. And this is just easy for me to catch. So. It may be a combination of roping this thing a million times, but it feels better to me in my saddle. I don't get out of time, I don't get leaning. When you're roping these things at a walk or a trot, you're always out of time. You're just kind of picking off, getting ready for that jump. But when you're going out here and you're getting it into a lope and you're getting kind of full contact like we were those last couple, then that's when it really, really stands out. This feels like a real steer to me coming around the corner and if I don't throw on the corner and I got to kick back up and swing over his back three or four or five times if I'm, I'm going one two three rope in time with every jump you watch great healers you watch the way that they rope when they come around the corner it's swing per jump and that's how that's how I think you know when you rope a goat when you rope anything you rope a swing per jump